I was born right about a block on the creek right here, December 6, 1928. And Dr. Wilcox brought me into the world. He was our doctor. Well, he wasn't. He was everybody's doctor. Old Merle's in and Sandy Island. He didn't charge anything. If you had a bushel of sweet potatoes or a bushel of oysters, you give it to him or, or collards or whatever you had. But he didn't ask for any money. But he didn't keep no record. He brought you in the world and he left. <laughs> I wouldn't take nothing for growing up in Merle's Inlet because it was just a few of us here, black and white. You know, and it was all like a big family. And the only eating we done was out of this creek. We didn't have ham and bacon and sausage and all that, you know. So we had shrimp and grits, we had oysters and grits, we had fish and grits, and we had hot biscuits. And then when I got old enough or toddler, we come here and swim in this creek, and then we went down the Buck Landing, and it's right, you can see it from here, that's the only two places that uh, we, all of us were out here swim at, except if you had a, in front of your house you would go in, but we all met at these two landings and, and swam. And it's like I say, I started school here in uh, that two-room house, and then when I finished the sixth grade, they sent us to Georgetown County, paid Ory County to take Merle's Inlet students to Myrtle Beach. So uh, I went to Merle Beach School and graduated from there. And then I started working when I was 12 years old. I worked at where the Hot Fish Club is. It was Locust Restaurant. I started there when I was 12. And then I went to Garden City Grill and worked until, uh, we didn't have no cars. We had to, we, we'd catch the mail to Garden City on, on Tuesday morning. And we boarded with Jojo Vereen and stay there, we stayed there with her till Sunday night, and then they, somebody would bring us home. And then we'd get out and catch the mail, which cost us a quarter to ride the mail to Garden City. And uh, so then when Lee's in the kitchen opened up, I went to work there because it was closer for me to, I could walk there, you know. I've been there ever since. There wasn't any jobs, and they, the WPA was put on, where people could go. My mother worked at the schoolhouse. You know, she'd go out there and work in the shrubbery and, and, and help clean the schoolhouse. That's how she made money. I was raised, my mother and daddy separated when we were real young, and we came to Merle's Inlet. My, my granddaddy lived here, and he bought, in fact, he built a lot of these houses. Some of them might be standing, but they need to fall down. And he was a carpenter, and he owned the house where Sidney Thompson owned Kelly. Oh, that big uh, house, there, that's where my granddad, he owned a house on the corner there. He owned it from the road to the creek. And he taken us in and, uh, and take care of us. And let me tell you, he was one good man. I can remember we'd get, he'd be cooking, uh, and we'd smell that bacon and ham, and all five of us would go tiptoeing in there and get on that. He had a, he was a carpenter, so he built his own, own tables and chairs, bench. And we'd get up there and, uh, and back then, the old people drank coffee out of a saucer. And he would give, he'd put five saucers down and pour coffee in that saucer, and we'd pick them up and drink the coffee. <laughs> Cephas Cook, he was from Conway. But he, he'd come down and, and work here because he was a carpenter, and a lot of these people's coming down building, um, you know, building on a creek, and I don't know how many houses is left on here. But he built most of them. Right, I did. No, he worked by himself. Uh -huh. But he never come home in the afternoon. He didn't have a, he had a, a croaker sack. You know what a croaker sack is? 
Okay, he'd have that, he'd take that to work with him, and he'd stop by the store and get us all uh, or apple or candy or banana something, you know, and he'd come home like Santa Claus with a bag over his shoulder. And it was just those good members, of course, it was hard times, you know. But everybody was in the same boat, so I don't know if they didn't know the difference. Cook us a boat pot of soup. We didn't have no lunch room there. We'd have, we'd have to take us a, a, a bowl and a spoon to, to school. And, and I don't know where you've seen 10 can, 10 cups back then, so we, I had a tin cup and a spoon, and she'd bring the soup over to the schoolhouse, because she lived right across the street. And she'd bring the soup over there, and uh, and that's what we would eat. <laughs> and Kathy said, you have soup every day? And I said, yep, I eat soup every day. It was good. We didn't have a school bus back then. They had a, a car or a little van that they hauled us to school in. Got to go on a picnic or anything, we had to walk. So we'd walk to the river, we'd, we'd take a bag of lunch. Everybody'd take a, their lunch, you know, in a bag to school, and we'd have our little picnic on the river. And then we'd walk from that school to Book Green Gardens and walk all over Book Green Gardens and back to the school. Oh, yeah, the Chandlers lived here, and um, oh, the Grants lived here, the Vicks. I mean, there's, there's a lot of right good many children. A Garden City Grill, and that's where uh, Kelly's grandmother worked with me, Al Pearl We worked together at Garden City Grill. And, uh, and so, but I started in a grocery store uh, uh, when I was about 10. And uh, Kelly's uh, grandmother, a great grandmother lived right next to the grocery store, and Kelly's daddy, and they were little boys, they'd come up to the grocery store, and I was young too. So I hit, Mr. Parker sent me to go get the mail, and I'd take all the children with me. <laughs> We'd have so much fun. Well, let's see, we had Charlie White's, it's where right next to Lee's in the Kitchen. That was an old restaurant. And they had good food, and, and Oliver's, and, and Oliver's, I think, was the first one here. There was 23 in my graduating class. Myrtle Beach High School was uh, just as going to Myrtle Beach. It's, the school was there now, but it burned when I was in high school. And then we got to go to a school on the ocean front in, that, in a motel. And that was neat, but we didn't do no studying. <laughs> it was too pretty to look out and see the ocean. I was first Miss Myrtle Beach High. And so I'm going to have an honor to go back November the 10th and crown Miss Moore Beach High this year. What year was that? Uh, 49. I got to go to Charleston and Miss Azalea Festival down there. And I got to go to um, the Ocean Forest Hotel. They called me and wanted me to come up there and be a beauty queen for these uh, older people. And uh, I don't know if Kelly remembers or not, but anyway, Ocean Forest Hotel, they had a, a a place out in the front yard. It uh, didn't have a top on it, but they had it where they had the band and serve food. You know, it was real neat. And they must have had a convention when I went up there. So, uh, and I enjoyed that because it wasn't my music. <laughs> <laughs> well, I stayed at that place in the kitchen and worked and, and met Raven, my husband, which was Kelly's uncle. And we got married. And I worked and raised two children. Blaine was the only church, and we'd have to walk to Blaine Church. And Lee's in the kitchen, we didn't have Lee's in the kitchen then. It was an old filling station. And this man that came in, not from Earl's Inlet, and opened it up and brought his women in from other places. And it was a rough place. So we we had to, everywhere we went, we had to walk. We didn't have no cars, so we'd have to walk. So we had to go down, in, when we were walking to church, we'd go down on the left-hand side, on the right-hand side in the ditch in front of the leaves in the kitchen to get to church because they'd all of them be out there in the yard and, and upstairs, is a, there's a window upstairs because there's two rooms up there. And the curtain would be going in and out like uh, 
salon, you know, you see in the Western movies. <laughs> what little bit of people we had in Marozella, they got a petition and called the sheriff and said something's got to be done. So he came and padlocked it. And uh, so the man that owned it left it. He never did pay no taxes, didn't pay nothing. He just left the building and left town, you know. So they sold Lisa Lake Kitchen at, at the courthouse in Georgetown on the street. And Achilles' granddaddy bidded the high, so he got it. Oh, I got to go visit with him. I got to eat at their table. I'd ride the bus of the little car, what the counter said, with the Skinners was he was a superintendent for them. And Jacqueline was my friend, Jacqueline Skinner, and they lived in uh, where a hundred of beach is now, but I mean it's all uh, it was there where they lived. It wasn't no big it was just there it was private, you know. And I'd go home with her and we'd walk. There's a road that goes from the house straight to the ocean. You know where that road is. And that's the only road the, the tenants lived uh, in uh, other parts of the the garden there. And so we'd walk down to Miss Miss Hunt let us go in there and ramble all over her house, stay in there, and y'all, it was beautiful. If you ever get a chance to see her, get movies of it, it's beautiful. And uh, she told the maid to go get us something to eat. And I remember we had little tea cakes, but I can't remember what we drank. I beat my brains out trying to see if I could remember what we had to drink. But I went to her house several times, and she, him and her, Miss, Miss Hunter, was just down to earth people, just plain as an old shoe. And they didn't have any children, so they enjoyed us coming there and rambling all over their house. The bedrooms in the wintertime, they had a fire going in all the rooms. And they, I know they had an interior decorated to go in because the uh, spreads and the curtains was matching. You know, to go in it now, it's, it's, it's you know, half, half filled. But when they lived in it, oh, it's gorgeous, beautiful. And I thoroughly, I mean, I enjoyed it. And I, I wouldn't take nothing for be, I'm, I'm so glad I was able for them to take us in, you know. I never had any, uh, any bought clothes uh, until I went to work to buy my own. And when I won one Miss Myrtle Beach High, my dress cost me $11. Because Miss uh, Woodward told me, she said, because we didn't have no money to buy, go out and buy no $300 dress. So Miss Woodward said, if you get the material, I'll make your dress free. So I went and got the material, which is the zipper and everything for it, cost me $11. It was just a plain dress with, uh, with the little square and the little fluffy sleeves, and it was together kind of in the waist and hung down. I didn't have no crinoline, couldn't afford no crinoline to go under it. And I felt so bad when these girls come in with these beautiful dresses on. I thought, Lord, look at me. <laughs> and then we called it a chicken farm, turkey farm, chicken farm. And they brought uh, feet uh, in, in bags, and it was beautiful. About like your scarf, it was colored, colored and all. And we'd go down there, and they'd give us these feed sacks. And my mother would uh, tear the seams out of them and wash them and make our clothes. And they're beautiful. It was up there where the walk is. It was a, a, a I don't know what you call the house, but anyway, it was a two-story house. And that's where the, the soldiers or whatever come in. That's where they stayed in there. We had ration. We had uh, stamps that we had to get food and stuff with like sugar and gas, everything, you had to have a stamp. And if you ran out of stamps, you'd just run out of nothing to eat. He was, uh, he worked at an international paper company and uh, he was a machinist. He retired from the international paper company and he was the master for Georgetown County. He'd done that on the side. His office was where the schoolhouse, the old, old schoolhouse was. Where it is now, it's a it's a brick building behind Lee's in the kitchen. Go down the road. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, he married them, and they were so nice. I should have brought the picture. I got a picture, of, you know, of uh, all the wedding, and uh, and it was.
was, it was beautiful. We were staying with my granddaddy when uh, my big brother was born, and it was four o'clock in the morning, my mother went in labor, and so she woke me up, and she said, I got to have help. Will you go to Allie and, and that, y'all go in, y'all go talk to her too, aren't you? Allie and Gordon and uh, Mr. Gordon and get help. Well, I got up and I had got a pair of boots for Christmas. And I got dressed and put my boots on and I had to walk down the road is as far as to, to, I guess that road is from the creek to, to the road there where my granddaddy lived. And then I had to walk a little ways down to their house. It's four o'clock in the morning. And I was so cold and it was snowing. The snow was coming down, it's falling in my boots. And I take, I was so cold I couldn't, not with my fans, I had to take my foot and knock. So I knocked with a foot, so they came, Mr. Gordon came to the door and I told him that my mother needed help. So he went and got a midwife and she delivered uh, my brother. Well, I had one son, Ray Lee, and of course I lost him. He just, he went into service. He finished high school and uh, went to tech and the draft, he got in the last draft. They drafted him, and uh, there was no way, I mean, you know, you had to go. When Uncle Sam said go, you got to go. So he went in and stayed in time and got out and went back to Coastal and had just finished all year uh, Coastal up. It was, went to work at uh, the Hilden in Myrtle Beach. And him and uh, Buddy Gore and uh, uh, James Vault Conway, they were all three worked together wanted to go skiing. He was a great, oh, Ray was a great, my son was a great water skier. And so they all come to the house that morning and Raymond stayed up about half a night fixing the boat and gassing it up for them. And they went skiing and so uh, it must have been 110 degrees that morning. It was hot and so Ray skied from Sandy Island, I mean from the boat like Wakawachi to Sandy Island and I think he just overexerted it. back home and she's got two children. I got a grandson, he'd be 21 in two weeks, and then I got a granddaughter, which is 16. And they live with me, they add a house onto my house. When I worked at Garden City Grill, there was nothing on Garden City. We didn't have no road to get there. You couldn't get to Garden City. So we put a plank across where Atlantic Avenue is there, that bridge. It, wasn't a, it was just a little narrow place, so we put a, a board across it to walk across to the ocean. There wasn't nothing, and there was one house at Surfside. Well, and at Lee's Island like Kitchen, we stayed open and to feed the, the people that uh, the governor had sent in to help the people, you know, take care of the property, what was left. And uh, so 12 o'clock, they came in and said, y'all go home. Oh, the haunt, it's not going to hit us. So Raymond and I went home, got in the bed. At one, about an hour later, they started banging on the door, saying, get out, it's coming in. And so like I said, I got up, got my bag, threw my rags in it. <laughs> and we took off. My, my son was three years old. Ray was three years old. And we got in the car where we couldn't cross. Uh, it drove, the water had already crossed 17, so we couldn't use the road, so we had, we had to go to bike way. And uh, so we went to Ainer to his mother's. So we got up next morning and came in and, and went on Garden City and it was, I cried. I mean, to see everything just wiped clean, you know. What didn't go in the ocean went in the creek, come in the creek. And the ocean, but the ocean was way out, just I take, way out, out past the pier. Yeah, when it went out, when that, when the water came in, it came in strong when it went back it went back strong and took what what, what was in that way and that one house uh, one house was standing because i don't know how much foundation i mean where it washed some of the foundation where it was, fell over i wouldn't have went in it you know i was here during hugo and um i living where i am now when hugo was coming in so anyway uh when kelly y'all was living down past me because Kelly had built, had cooked a big, I mean, big pans of food and having it for, 
to had to be shut in, you know, to eat. And so her and Dexter decided they're going to leave town. And so her daddy, Billy, he came to the house. He said, can I stay with y'all? And I said, yeah. He said, well, let's go get the food. <laughs> so we went down to Kelly and Dexter's house and got all the food that she'd cooked up. And we had a feast. And her sister, Sherry, came over. It was destroyed stuff, you know. And we went down um, to Nancy's where y'all eat. And there was a two-store building. The bar was upstairs. And the restaurant was downstairs. And it tore that thing up to pieces. And I ain't never seen so much liquor bottles. It strung all, and people was out there getting it. <laughs> I went in, in the guard, uh, National Guards was protect, trying to protect everybody's property. And they said, oh, Miss Lee said, please go get us some shirts. Said, we come down here and we got to stay longer and we, we, we didn't bring no shirts. So I went and asked Sherry, did she have some shirts she'd give them? I went to the kitchen and asked Dexter. So I went to all the restaurants and said, these, these men need some clothes shirts, so they, they give the shirts out to me, and I carry two of them. When we opened up, or we was opening for lunch and dinner, you know, and so we didn't have no business. We might have three or four parties all day long. And so one day, Ephraim and I was sitting out there at front, and we were talking. He said, I was there, he said, you know, we might have to close up, he said, because the bank's going to cut me off. He says, so they don't owe me any more money. And I said, well, Ephraim, I said, let's start opening up for breakfast and lunch and dinner. And he said, you think you can swing it? I said, I'll try. And so we did. We started opening up for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And it uh, it took off. I mean, people with breakfast and, and we started having a blue plate. You've heard of the blue plate lunches? And we started uh, having that. We got a lot of the workers, you know, to come in to eat with us. And uh, and it started. And uh, what was so funny, we had to be there at 6 o'clock to get the grits and everything on. And Kelly's daddy and myself worked together. Well, we didn't have enough sense to go home and go to bed and get some sleep. So, uh, so and then Betty, uh, Betty Altman and Wallace, her uncle, uh, they worked the shift. But we'd drive up and he would be standing in the yard five o'clock in the morning. He'd wait for us to open that place up. I said, Billy, get in there, let's start. We'd get in there and we'd start slinging that food around and I'd just scrubbing them tables down and fixing them. And you know, so, but it kicked in and it's still good business. But it was hard getting used to it though, you know what I mean? Because I'd go home, I'd go home about 2.30 and sleep about 4.30 and go back to work. And we didn't close to one o'clock in the morning because we stayed open to get the overflow. You know, what little restaurants we had, they would come and eat with us. They didn't want to go home and go to bed, so they wanted to go find a place to stay. So they'd come and keep us up all night. So we liked it because we were making money, you know. Yeah, uh huh. Eat for an opera? Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. They stayed up there. They were living up there. They stayed up there right many, uh, several years. We'd give it to them and they'd go out in the woods and, and eat it and, you know. But now the ones that lived here, I mean, most of us eat out of that creek. I mean, we were living good, you know. Nobody went hungry. Back in uh, my, our young days, we, uh, Paula's Island, you know, on the, uh, Paula's Island Island there, they had uh, houses they rented to college students. And those college students would come down, they'd get in trouble, they come, and so that's why we started opening up for breakfast too, because they'd come eat breakfast with us. But now we had a time with them. They would come in there and they'd pour water in the floor, they'd throw tartar sauce up on the wall. I mean, they were so, just doing, Crazy things, you know. So one day I had this party and they had thrown that tartar sauce all up where the bathrooms, at, our bathrooms are. And I said, Ephraim, come out here and look at this wall. He come out. I said, look what they've done. He, he went and got a bucket and a mop and come out. He said, all right, push them chairs back and get up and clean up this mess. <laughs> the master down there, what was his name? They got in trouble, but he was such a good, he loved children. But he would take them in his office and he, he, he'd make them sit there and he'd call their parents. And if their parents lived in Atlanta, he'd sit right there with them till their parents come in that door. He wouldn't take them to jail. He'd make the parents come get them. Well, 
when we first opened up, it was uh, 75 cents for a seafood platter. And then we went up to a dollar. And then we went up to a dollar and a quarter. And we was we were between Loki's and our restaurant because Loki's kept theirs down to a dollar and we charged a dollar and a quarter. Well, all our customers that we catered to was good to, they left us and started going to Loki's because they could get it for a dollar where it was a dollar and a quarter at our place. You know. But you know, but back then, you know, a, a, the dollar was hard to, to make just like it is now, a thousand dollars, you know. Oh yeah, the girls that worked at Sunset Lodge, I got the honor to wait on all of them. And let me tell you, they were some beautiful girls. The asses, well, were their doctors. And they all, that's one thing they had to have their health card. And, um, and Hazel, I mean, she kept a clean place. I never went in there, but all the, all the men that went there said it was clean and neat, you know. And um, so then, um, and they let it go. I mean, nobody said nothing about it. They just let it ride and until we integrated. And then they started having fights out there. And that's when they said, close it up. And that's when they had to close it up. They'd come in to eat. The whole crowd of them would come in to eat. And they were beautiful, beautiful girls. And I can be being young, I said, well, you know what? That's awful to be making your living like that. <laughs> Here I was making a dollar a night, and they were making a hundred. <laughs> York, he started it. He wanted to bring his, he brought his baseball players down here. See, he'd bring them down here, and they'd all stay at half the time at sunset. And so he helped them. Um, he financed it for Hazel. Who was Hazel? She was from uh, Isle of Palms. She had a house at Isle of Palms. And her children did not know that she would run a place like that. But Tom Yorkie, oh, now he was a nice man. He eat with us all the time too. I know where my daughter gets her meanness from. When I would be waiting on tables, you know, we had one girl, a black girl in the kitchen. She's scared to death of dead people in an ambulance. So I looked out there and uh, this hearse, was, this ambulance was sitting out front. And I said, I'm gonna watch who walks in. And the fishermen's walked in, it was fishermen's. The fishermen would come down here fishing, and the fishermen walked in. And so I waited on them, and I said, when y'all leave, would y'all just drive around the building, drive real slow. And so when they got in the car to go around the building, I told uh, the girl, I said, I need a head of lettuce. See, we, we didn't have no refrigeration in the, in the restaurant. It was all out in a cooler. I said, I need a head of lettuce. Would you go get it for them? When she walked out of that door, there was that ambulance. That man was stretched out. <laughs> You know, I regretted that though, because she could have had a heart attack and died. I'm not kidding you. She could have, oh. and I, I apologized to her several times. Sorry, I'd done that to you, but. <laughs> Seems like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> where they where they stayed uh, during, the week. during the week, and then uh, somebody would come pick them up, take them home. Oh, like on, now we close on Monday at least like kitchen, so everybody's picked up on Sunday night there, go home, and then somebody bring them back. Garden City Grill was 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 right there where you could look down Atlantic Avenue, straight down, and back then you could see the ocean. There wasn't nothing in, in the way that you could, you know. I wish y'all could see Garden City. They had the sand dunes and the seaweed, but you know we was over there on that desert. Island, just a few of us over there swimming in that ocean. And like I say, Surfside was, they had a road, a dirt road going to Surfside, but there wasn't nothing on Surfside except one house. And that was two men from King Street, Mr. French and Mr. Cook. So they had to, they sold the house and went back to King Street. <laughs> She wasn't a beach person. She couldn't stand people going out that ocean and getting that sand and coming back and putting it in her house. We didn't have no sunscreen, no sun lotion. 
If we had it, we, we didn't have no money to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> we had a one-piece, one-piece baby suit, and most of the time it had a skirt over it. No, you didn't, there wasn't no uh, bikinis. The county, uh, Georgetown County, or all the counties, they, we had an outside toilet. Do y'all know what an outside toilet is? Okay, we had an outside toilet, and they came, I don't know, once a month or twice a month, and they cleaned it out. And we had to get up in it. If you got to get up, bath, you got to get up and go in the middle of the night to the bathroom outside. We, no, we didn't have, we had to pump out. We had a hand pump. You know what a hand pump is? We had a hand pump, and we pumped our water. But we came here and got our artesian water to drink because that, that pump water was, um, and we didn't buy no white clothes because you couldn't wash your clothes in that, that water because it would turn them everything yellow. And we'd all, everybody would use this artesian well. They'd bring their jugs or whatever and get the water, and that's what they drank. I'd have to walk all the way from Brook, Brookwood, where I live there, all the way here and get water and walk all the way back with that water. See, y'all got it made. Absolutely, I don't disagree on that. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Myrtle Beach. Now, back in my days, everybody from here went to Myrtle Beach. Hardly anybody went to George, unless you went to a movie and you had to catch the mail. The mail back then, the mailman that carries the mail, that's the only place we had to get to, to Georgetown. And I think he charged a quarter for us to go and we go to a movie there and then get back in the mail and, and come back home. Oh, I tell you one thing, I wish Burr Beach could go by like it was when I grew up. There was no it was a family beach. We didn't have all these strip joints and all these tacky shops with all this filthy stuff wrote on them, you know, the clothes. And I mean, it was just a family beach. And it was safe. You could walk on, on there. And see, in the summertime, the beach area, they didn't go to Georgetown because you got to dress up in gloves and hats and, and dressy clothes to go into town. And Conway was the same way. So nobody went to Conway, nobody went to Georgia in the summertime. Because we went to church, we pulled our clothes off, put on our rags to play in, you know? And so I know when I started dating Raymond, I was used to, you know, pulling off my Sunday clothes, putting on my shorts. And so he told me, he said, oh, I want you to go home, I come and I want you to go home and have uh, dinner with me. Well, I go back to Aner with him. And here, all his people sitting up there in their dressy clothes. Here I am, half naked. <laughs> and I said, Raymond, why didn't you tell me they keep their Sunday clothes on all day? I said, we come, we come home, pulled ours off, and, and got in the creek and swam, or, you know. And, but back then, people lived so much different, you know. But you caught, and just like Charleston, you didn't see nobody on Charleston Street that didn't have a hat and gloves on. Raymond, my husband raced on a big tobacco farm, and that's what it was, farmland. Yeah, well, yeah, we had tobacco on my farm, but we bought the track of land, it's almost 12 acres. And we gave $1,500 for it. And we, we oh, built our home with oh, Farmers Home Administration. You know, you have to have a farm and you can get there loan and our uh, payments are $44 a month on our house. But then that's something, $1,500 for that land. But uh, but I work, Raymond worked at the bill and he was master at it, uh, and we farmed. We had to hit the floor early in the morning, go to bed late at night. We had the backer and, uh, and back in them days, uh, we had corn and sold corn, but then the government started paying us not to plant corn because it was flooding the market. Ain't that silly? They was paying, we was getting a check not to get out in that hot sun. I said, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, still are they still doing that? For certain things, yeah. But they, we, we got a check not to plant no corn on that place. We gathered our tobacco on, on Saturdays. And uh, so I cooked for all the farmhands. I, I bought pots from the restaurant. I let Ephraim, Ephraim order, he could order pots. And pay, it was cheaper for me to order through the restaurant it was for me to go buy them. And I had the big, you know, the big pots like restaurants got. 
and I'd cook a big pot of peas, a big pot of butter beans. I'd fix fried chicken, I'd have brown gravy, I'd have corn on the cob, and I'd have sliced tomatoes. A lot of this come out of the garden now. Sliced tomatoes and sliced cucumbers. I'd make hot biscuits, I'd have potato salad. Clay, our manager, he lives in the kitchen. He said, I'll come, I'll come help you in the back just to eat. You know, he helped us on there. He would probably be about six or eight. Not, I mean, for the hands, but about, uh, in my family, then I had four in mine, you know. But uh, I had plenty for them to eat, you know. Well, you have to cure it. You don't know nothing about tobacco. Well, some, but I <laughs> <laughs> We had one, one tobacco barn, and it's still standing, but it's about to fall down. You have to, well, you plant your tobacco, and then it grows up. You got to crop it, break it off in the stalk, and then you got to take it down. You got to go to the barn, and you got to pile here, to pile here, and you got somebody to hand in it, and then you got people that ties it on a on a stick, and then you got to climb up in a tobacco barn. Back then, we did it. With, we cured ours with wood, but now they got gas burners that they do it, and they had to hang it up in the tobacco barn and cure it. And then when it got cured, you taken it down and had to. Take it off the stick and separate the good from the bad. And then you take it to the market, hoping you got some money for it. When Ray went to service, when, when Ray went off to service, because he was our, my son was, I mean, he was a lot of help, you know, in, in the back or so. When he went off in this service, we quit. That's hard days, though, I tell you, when you work at that restaurant, don't get home to what or two, and, and got to hit that floor at five in the morning and pick up them in the back of hands. And, but my son, y'all, uh, he used to go to Ocean Drive. That's where the shag, uh, shag started, you know. And uh, so uh, one Friday night, he was, all of, a bunch of us was going to Ocean Drive shagging. So Raymond said, Ray, we got to get up at four o'clock and get the barn of the back out. And uh, so he said, okay, so what time did he come on? He got home at four o'clock. Raymond said, you're not going to bed. Y'all, you talk about somebody sick. He got out there and it was 110 degrees in that field. He didn't have a dry thread on him. He'd come to the house and I'd get him a, a mason jar of ice water. He said, please go tell my daddy I can't stay out there. I said, I'm not gonna do it. I said, we got these young boys out here the same age as you. I said, you know what, when you play, you pay. I said, you knew that you need to get home and get up and go to work. But anyway, when he when we finished up in the back, he came to the house and eat and went and got in the shower and, and got in his bed. I didn't see him till the next day. <laughs> oh yeah, he's just plain old Mickey's plain. See, his son and my son was the best of friends. And uh, see, they Jehovah's Witness. They don't believe in Christmas. And so at Christmas time, uh, uh, his son would come over to the house and play with the toys. And um, yeah, he was just down to earth. And his first wife, the mother of the children, she was, she was down to earth, you know. What happened to her? They separated, she went back north. Okay. And she died not too, she died just before he died. He, he didn't live too long after she died. But uh, they separated and uh, she went back, uh, New York, is that where he's from? But his daddy, he told me, his daddy told him one time he was, he'd stay in his bedroom and read and write. And his daddy went and opened that door and he said, I want to tell you something. I want you to get out of this house and get you a real job. <laughs> well, just like it's low tide now, we had a little rake to get our crabs out in a bucket, it, and of course you pick the oysters, and you got to dig the clams. Did y'all do that year round or uh -huh. certain times of the year? Certain, well, crabs at certain times of the year, but we did it year round, <coughs> you know. And Captain Morris, oh, he kept us in fish. We didn't, we didn't have to worry about our fish. He lived where the, um, the park is, by Hot Fish Club. That's where Mr. Morris, he owned that land. In, and he had, a, he had a little camp, him and his wife separated. She lived across the street in the house and he, he went across there and built him a little camp and it was dirt. He just put him a top over it and that's where he stayed. And see, back 
my days, people didn't go out there and fish for the fun. They fished for a living. And see, he had nets that, that they'd have to uh, come early in the morning. They'd go out and, and use the net to bring in the fish. And then they'd sell them. They had a restaurant. We lived next door. Uh, we'd go up there to Miss May Moore. Her name was May. And she had a restaurant. And uh, of course, it wasn't like a restaurant you go in and sit down. It was just like a regular house. But if she'd cook. If anybody wanted to go sit at her table and eat, she'd charge them. But now she never charged us because we'd go up there and she'd feed us free, you know. And uh, but uh, and so he stayed down there. That's what he and we'd go down there. We'd take us a, a bucket, a pot, and go down there when the fish come. When he come in six o'clock, seven o'clock with the fish, he'd give us a whole bucket of fish. And so he kept us in the fish. But we had a little rake. Y'all ever seen the clam rake? That uh, we'd go out there and dig our clams and and go through those little mud holes and get our crabs. That's good eating, you know. What I thought back then, it was awful. But I think about it now, that's good eating. When I grew up, it's like God made it. Nobody, they hadn't dressed it or anything. Nobody went out there and dressed it. And you know where to walk. You would know where to walk out in the creek. And the only what that main channel always the main channel always kept water in it. It never it never goes dry, but the other part goes dry. I live on Watsaw Road, and uh, he lived down past me on the right where the uh, where, uh, Little West's trailer park is in there. There wasn't nothing in there, but a road it went through there. And he lived back in there, and he had a, he would get uh, vegetables and collards and peas and corn and stuff. See, we didn't we didn't have no place to plant a garden, so he'd go around to houses and sell the stuff 